بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اور یو مائی اسٹوڈنٹس اف گریڈ 6 ائی ہوپ یو آل ول بی فائن ہیز یور ٹیچر مسز سناولا وت دی سبجیکٹ اف انگلش گرامر ٹوڈے وی ار گوئنگ ٹو ڈو ٹو ڈفرنٹ ایکسرسائزز آن پیج نمبر 12 اینڈ پیج نمبر 13 دیز ٹو ایکسرسائزز ول کور دی ٹاپکس اف کمپاؤنڈ سبجیکٹس اینڈ پریڈیکیٹس اینڈ آلسو وی ول ہیو ا بریف انالیسز اف پنکچویٹنگ کمپاؤنڈ سینٹینسز During our today's online lecture, the students will know the difference between subjects and predicates. They will also understand the role of coordinating conjunctions in the compound sentences. Now we are moving towards the solution of our exercises on page number 12 and page number 13. This is our page number 12 here. First of all, we have a brief introduction of compound subject. As I told you earlier in the previous lecture that a subject is a person, a subject is a place or anything or any entity that is performing an action that is quite visible that can be felt that can be seen that can be observed clearly such an action so any person anyone doing an action in a sentence will be categorized as a subject here now if two persons or more than two persons are doing one or two different action then those two person will become a compound subject Similarly, a compound predicate has two or more predicates with the same subject. For example, if I say, Peter is learning and writing his lesson. Now, Peter is just one boy, but he is doing two different works simultaneously, learning and writing. So, you can say there are compound predicates in one sentence here. Combined subjects are predicates using and, or, or, but, uh, or the words either or neither nor so we are going to use these coordinating conjunctions to compose our compound sentences here but in this lesson on page number 12 first of all we are going to identify we are going to segregate compound subjects and compound predicates okay on page number 12 we have total five sentences our job is to find any compound subject or compound predicate if the sentence has compound predicate we will write capital p and if the sentence has compound subject we will write capital s and then we also have to clearly mention the exact compound subject or compound predicate on the line i am going to read out the statement of question write an s if the sentence has a compound subject write a p if the sentence has a compound predicate write each compound subject or predicate on the line then put parenthesis around word or the words that combine subjects or predicate predicates number 1 umar got a new puppy and named her daisy now umar is one boy but he has done two different works means first he got a new puppy and then he named her daisy so it means there are two different predicates so you are going to write capital p because the sentence has a compound predicate and got a new puppy and named her daisy will be written as a compound predicate number 2 daisy and umar enjoy playing outside together in good weather the sentence has compound subjects you can find two different characters daisy and umar in the sentence daisy and umar are compound subjects so you are going to write their names on the line Number 3 neither umar nor daisy likes to be outside in the rain again the sentence has compound subjects neither umar nor daisy will become our compound subject you will write capital s also don't forget to write the real compound subject number 4 they either play inside or sleep during a rainstorm now this is a compound predicate because one group of people one group of person means they actually that is one group one subject doing two different actions play and sleep play or sleep two different activities so either play inside or sleep during a rainstorm will become compound predicate and the last one all the dogs and their owners enjoy the weekend classes now two different groups the first group is that of dog and the other group belongs to the owners 
So two different groups of dogs and owners will become compound subjects. So we have written capital S. Also, please write all the dogs and their owners on the line. Now we are going to do our exercise on page number 13. Here are some brief instructions for the students before they solve the exercise. Use a comma before a coordinating conjunction in a compound sentence. Use a semicolon to separate two parts of a compound sentence when they are not joined by a conjunction. My dear students, if you are going to combine two different clauses with the help of a coordinating conjunction, you will use comma. And if you are using semicolon, punctuation mark, semicolon, then there will be no coordinating conjunction in the sentence. Do not use a comma to separate a compound subject or compound predicate joined by and or or. So here we have two exercises on page number 13. First I am going to explain exercise A. Combine each set of sentences to make a compound sentence. Use a comma and a conjunction or a semicolon as shown in parentheses. For question number 1, question number 2 and question number 3, we have been given two, three pairs of sentences, right? There are three pairs of sentences and also there is an instruction what we are going to do. So for question number one, we have two sentences. Also, we have been asked to use a semicolon to make a compound sentence. My brother goes to Valley High School. He is, he is involved in many activities. So new sentence will be my brother goes to Valley High School, semicolon, space. He is involved in many activities. As I told you earlier, you, you will use a semicolon to separate two parts of a compound sentence, but there will be no conjunction, right? Number two, Josh is in the math club. He is also on the track team. Now here we will not use any, any semicolon, rather a comma will be applied along with a coordinating conjunction and Josh is in the math club and he is also on the track team. Number three, you can usually find him on the track after school. He will be in the library. So here we are going to use comma plus R. You can usually find him on the track after school, comma, space, or he will be in the library. Next exercise B is very interesting. Here we have two sentences and we have to combine them into one. For example, if I say here, Ali completes his work, Ali learns his work. So you can combine these two sentences into one by saying that Ali completes and learns his work. The same way we are going to accomplish our questions from 4 to 6 on page number 13. Shannon runs hurdles, Shannon throws the discus. So you will convert these two independent clauses into one compound sentence. Shannon runs hurdles and throws the discus. Number 5. Demetrius plays, the, plays in the school band. Demetrius sings in the choir. So you are going to write a new sentence. Demetrius plays in the school band and sings in the choir. So it means you will not write the name of Demetrius second time in the sentence here. And the last one. Band performances keep Demetrius busy. Choir concerts keep Demetrius busy. And the answer will be band performances and choir concerts keep Demetrius busy. My dear students, so far we have done our two exercises on page number 12 and 13 about compound subjects of compound predicates and the use of comma and semicolon with respect to different coordinating conjunctions. I hope you will have done neat and clean work in your book. Please revise this stuff at least twice for a better clarity. See you next time with a new lesson. Till then, bye-bye. Stay home, stay safe.